Hello, this is Mike Fauché, and thanks for tuning into the channel today. If you own almost any NAS device and you're not taking advantage of it for your time machine backups, then you're really missing out on a free and convenient way of backing up your Macs. To see how easy it is to do this, then watch the rest of this video, and remember to like and subscribe for more content like this. In today's video, I want to quickly cover how to set up and configure your NAS device to be a time machine target. I'll walk through how to set up both a QNAP and a Synology, but the concept works across others such as TerraMaster or ASUS Store. To start with, I'll walk you through the setup and configuration of the QNAP. The first thing I would recommend is creating a separate user. It'll work without it, but in general, it'll be easier in creating a quota to limit the time machine's storage if you have a separate user account for the time machine. Go to the control panel and select users and create a new user. Give it a unique name and create a password for it. Next, under network and file services, select Win Mac NFS and select Apple Networking and enable it if it's not already enabled. The next step is to create a shared folder that you'll want to use for the backup. On QNAP, there's a couple ways of doing this, but I'll cover the more traditional method. Create a shared folder, select the read write permissions for the new user that you created on this folder. On the next screen, leave everything at the default setting except for disable the recycle bin. You do not want to create a recycle bin for your time machine folder as the time machine is always changing. This next step is also important. As this is a NAS, unless you create a quota, your time machine will continue to eat away at your storage. So creating a quota of roughly two or three times your Mac's internal storage drive should do the trick. For me, in this example, I'm going to set a one terabyte quota, but you can always change this based on your storage requirements later. I usually start low and add more as needed. Remember that on a QNAP, this quota applies to all users when you enable it. So you may have to go back and change some of your current users if they need more storage or if you want to disable the quota altogether. Optionally, you can skip the quota and set the amount of space that you want to use directly on the time machine options, which we'll cover later in the video. The next step is to enable time machine backups. To do this, make sure that you've installed the Hybrid Sync 3 or the HBS3 app if you haven't already installed it. If you don't have it installed, go to the App Store and install HBS3. Go ahead and open up the app and then make sure the Time Machine is enabled. Scroll down and select which folders you want to use. Most of the time it will be a single folder. However, in my case, I've created a separate folder for each device just to keep things logical for me. This isn't a requirement, but I find it easier to keep things straight. That's pretty much it for setting up the QNAP. Before we actually configure Time Machine on your Mac, let's quickly go through how to configure the Synology. And once we complete this, we'll set up the Time Machine on the Mac side. The process is the same no matter what NAS or storage device you're using. Setting up the process on the Synology is very similar. We need to go to Users and create a new user. I'll use the same user account that I used on the QNAP and use the same password. Keep everything as default. And once the user is created, just as we did on the QNAP, we're going to create a new folder. Same philosophy applies here and make sure you disable the recycle bin. Keep the default for the next couple of menus and make sure that you add read and write permissions to the new folder for the new user that you created. Next, go to File Services and go to the Advanced tab. You can click on this link down here or just go to the Advanced tab and make sure that Bonjour is enabled. As we did in the QNAP, Click on the selected folders and select the folders that you want to use for Time Machine. The last thing is the quota. Like the QNAP, we should set a quota on the Time Machine folder, or as I mentioned, optionally set it in the Time Machine settings when you create your Time Machine backup. But to do this, go back to the folder that you created for the Time Machine, click Edit, and select the quota, type in the size that you want to hit, and hit Save. Though you can set a quota based on user, Synology offers you the option of just setting the folder quota directly, which is a little bit easier than the QNAP approach. Now that we've set up our NAS units, the hard part's really completed, and we're now ready to attach our folder to the Time Machine. Go into the Settings screen and find Time Machine and select it. From there, click Add Backup Disk, and you should get a pop-up with the network drive that you just created. In some cases, depending on several factors, you may first have to mount the NAS drive from the finder for it to show up, but most of the time it will be detected automatically. Select the drive that you want and select Setup Disk. In a short time, 
it will configure itself. And when it's done, you'll get the configuration screen where you can create a password for the backup. If you're not able to or didn't want to create a quota in your NAS directly, you can create it here, which is often easier depending on your configuration and your NAS device. Once you hit done, it'll complete the configuration and it's now ready for your Time Machine backup. When the Time Machine is running, you can see that it's creating a single file in your NAS folder. As this is a compressed file, we'll currently only see the one file that's being created even though all the things are being backed up. I did want to mention that anytime you can change the options of your Time Machine backup and change the frequency of the backup. The default is every hour, but I find that to be too often as I never save any actual data to my system and save everything to a central storage location, but you can decide what works out for you. Should you ever need to restore any files, the process is also very easy. Just mount the NAS unit and find the folder that you're using for your backup and double click on the file. Once it opens up, select the enter the time machine button in the upper right hand side of the finder window, which will bring you into a restore mode of sorts. Here you can drill down and select a particular day, drive, folder, or file to restore. Once you find the file or folder, you can right click on it and copy and paste it to anywhere you want on your system, or just restore it to its original location. Anyway, this is about it for today's video, so please post any questions in the comments section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you find this content useful, and check out my other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.